I've done it. The best potatoes in the world. So this is um, this is my favorite personal potato dish. Quite easy to make. It's also like probably not the most traditional way. It's a pomme boulangère. Pomme boulangère just means potatoes of the baker. There's uh, obviously like a boulangerie in Paris. Add in your salt to your onions to st help them break down, start releasing some of their liquid. I don't really need to teach you how to caramelize onions, but basically the fundamental principle is cook them until they're really nice and golden brown. Don't get them too hot. Don't burn the onions, otherwise they'll get bitter. bitter. In terms of the potatoes themselves, I'm just gonna show you, because um, we're gonna use a mandolin for the video, but if you are just using a, a knife, just it's really, really simple to do with a knife. It's not really a chef hack, but a mandolin is so much better for slicing consistently evenly use a guard the safe way to do it is when you get to the end just use your hand here you only need to scrape off the palm of your hand not the tips of your fingers okay so these have been cooking down now for about 30 to 40 minutes and you can see they're really nice and caramelized but the key to this is just really gentle because you don't want any black bits that's going to make it bitter i'm going to start to layer up the potatoes that we sliced and we've got a little bit of beef stock and we've got some clarified butter as well. Do it in the microwave, it's the easiest way is just literally to microwave it for 20 seconds and then, then it'll be perfect. For this recipe, I'm not gonna take the, the milk solids out. If a few milk solids go in the pan, who cares? It's gonna cook down with that beef stock anyway. Just to be clear, whack the butter in a microwavable container and just put it on for 20 seconds. That's it. There's a load of mystique around it. I, I actually catch my chef sometimes doing it like, They'll boil it until the solids of the bu of the butter turn into um, sort of like caramelized and they'll pass it off. I don't get the whole thing, to be quite honest. I think people overcomplicate it. This, quite simply, is clarified butter. This, at the bottom, is the milk solid. The milk solids can burn, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna add beef stock. I've got caramelized onions, so it should never get hot enough for these things to burn anyway, you know? So I'm just gonna use this for flavor and to help the whole thing cook and caramelize. In the base of my pan, I have beautiful caramelized onions. And then I'm just gonna layer up that with a little bit of the clarified butter and then the first layer of stock. This is just to add a little bit of moisture to the bottom of the pan. And you've gotta remember, this is gonna steam the potatoes as they start to cook, stir to combine. And I'm just gonna do a quick taste check because I added the salt at the beginning, but I've not added any salt since. So just. And actually, I'm just going to add a, a hint of uh, black pepper and salt. And this whole process now is pretty much just going to be mirrored on that. We're going to be tasting, adding butter, adding stock, adding salt and pepper, and layering the whole thing up. So the best pom boulanger I've ever had is at Trinity. And he does it in a beautiful cast iron pot. The reason I'm doing it in this dish here is because I think this is something that I absolutely love making on a Sunday. Because I think... Um, so traditionally, this I'm from um, I'm from Lancashire, so the north of England. The only difference between this and a, say a Lancashire hot pot is this is much more potato focused. Whereas a Lancashire hot pot is like lamb cooked down with other vegetables, and then you put this layered potato on top. It's beautiful because it's a French technique, but also it kind of has a bit of meaning from from where I come from, which is. Uh, Lancashire where it's it's quite a traditional dish there's a slight overlap on each potato but not too much because I'm gonna season and I want the layers to cook evenly so you don't want it to be a massive overlap and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put the smaller potatoes into the center and then save the slightly larger ones for the um, for the outside it just makes it all look a little bit daintier because it's a gradient on how the potatoes go to the middle and then when you get to the middle just an even less of an overlap, so I'm just gonna go three or four here. Perfect. And then lightly ladle on a bit of your stock. Season. And then clarified butter. Like I say, I've got all that, that milk solid at the bottom. If I put all that in there, it would create this layer on top that does look a little bit scorched at the end. Okay, so next layer, what I'm going to do is just go to alternate from where the layer I went before. So I, you're aiming for that potato to be in between the other layers. The onions, what they're going to do is they're basically going to steam 
add sweetness to the to the as they cook, and they're gonna further caramelize. So the best thing about this dish is how far we've taken those onions. So they are gonna be like just an insane sort of flavor bomb at the bottom. It's almost like, I mean, if you think about it, it's almost like adding a nice layer of potatoes to a French onion soup. I guess that's the best way to describe it. As the stock reduces and glazes the potatoes, and as the potatoes cook, the starch is released and kind of binds everything together. So it's kind of like a perfect, perfect little process. And see what I've done now is I've just added more stock but the layer of potato is just over what the stock is. And I'm gonna carry that on with a few more layers. And then this layer, salt, pepper, layer of pick thyme as well. And then this fragrance is gonna come all the way up from the bottom as well. And when you pull this out of the oven, it's gonna have the most incredible smell. So this last, last little layer, for me, the, the agria is perfect for this. What you do get in the end is like the beautiful caramelization and crisp without it coloring too far and basically dis discoloring as it cooks. I'm doing it in this like non-stick pan. You could do it in a, in a nice cast iron Le Creuset or something like that. But any, anything that's oven safe can really be used for this recipe. Make sure the potatoes around the outside have the most amount of coverage of fat because the rest is gonna bubble up and it'll get exposed nicely. Around the outside, it is most likely to cook and burn before the other ones do. And then last little bit of beef stock, again, focused around the outside of the pan. Don't worry if a little bit of the stock sort of comes up and stays on top, because that is gonna get really beautiful and caramelized as it cooks, salt and pepper. And we will add another layer of thyme to it, but right at the end. Just done a really quick, simple cartouche. So a lid will basically block a lot of the steam from escaping. The best thing about a cartouche is it allows for evaporation and caramelization whilst you cook. So I think a cartouche is one of those things that it's uh, a, screw it, I'd actually say it's an underused te technique. But for so this, this, what we're using this for is this is gonna reduce steam, caramelize all at the same time. And that's a cartouche will allow that airflow and that evaporation at the same time. Yeah. It's more of a restaurant thing, but it's no reason why you can't do it at home. Everyone's got grease proof at home. Put it into the center and then you know exactly where to cut. So if I just cut like that around the outside. And then just a tiny, tiny bit off in the middle just to allow that steam to escape. And that's our perfect cartouche fit for this pan. There's a tiny little bit of an overlap, and what I'm doing now, if you can see, I know there's enough beef stock in there because you get this perfect seal all the way around that cartouche. Crimp it all the way to the bottom. That's just to help with the uh, help with steam. And then just make sure there's a tiny little bit of stock in there. This is gonna cook the potatoes with the cartouche on. And then to caramelize the potatoes, we'll want to remove that layer. So this is just a standard plate, and this is just gonna keep everything in the right place as it cooks. The oven's only gonna be on about 120, 120 degrees. So there's no way that that plate's gonna cook, but this will keep everything in, in, in line. If you've got a little metal sheet pan, go for it. at least an hour for the cooking of that, and then it's probably gonna be an hour and a half to be fully cooked all the way through. So our boulanger has been in 45 minutes and we're just gonna check it just to see how it's going. The only thing that I did halfway through was just flip that plate and then it's probably about time that we just have a look at it. And I'm gonna take the weight off. So I know that all my potatoes are nicely in line, which is perfect. And yeah, I'm just gonna remove that plate and pop it back in. All the fats come to the top and you can see all the beef stocks up there as well. So at this stage, there's no need to add any more beef stock to it. That beef stock's gonna start to evaporate a lot quicker because there's no restriction to it coming off. And now I'm just gonna take it from 120 up to 130, evaporating that beef stock and caramelizing the potatoes. 
Okay, so this has been another 25 minutes and we know it's, well, we can guess it's pretty much fully cooked. Oh, so good. So what we're gonna do now is just take off the cartouche. This is what you want. This is what the plate has done is sort of like secured all the layers. And this is gonna now really nicely caramelize. I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny little bit more clarified and then a bit more of this beef stock. It almost starts to look a little bit like glass-like on the top of the potato. So think of it like an egg wash, but for potatoes. Now the temptation is now to put this oven hot in order to cook them quickly, but what you actually want to do is keep it on that 130 temperature because what's going to start to happen otherwise is the potatoes that are on the, on the uh, top layer will start to shrivel. So the stock and the clarified butter keep it applied in layers and layers and layers will help to keep them beautifully glazed and cook them perfectly without them getting too dry. Okay, so last stage, we've got this stunning, beautiful glazed potato and I'm just gonna do a really nice little top up on the glaze. So just tilt it and you've got just this little bit of juice that's coming out. I'm just gonna put that in the areas that look like they need the most amount of help. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for these really nice caramelized potatoes all around the outside. And then you've got a little patch here. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of butter on there just to help it caramelize. Thing is just to finish with a load of pick time. Last five minutes. Any longer than that, the time will burn. Okay, so there we have it. Beautiful little layers, golden potato. The beef stock's glazed it really nicely. And then all around the outside, you've got the bit that people are gonna be fighting over, these like chewy, caramelized bits of potato. And then in the center is a little bit more tender. I don't think there's a better potato than that. On the face of planet Earth. You've got these layers of uh, caramelized onion in the bottom as well. Good that you've got a nice mix of like, it's quite a lot of, um, onions at the bottom and not that many potatoes so really rich really creamy potatoes are so tender but also crispy and chewy at the same time yes yes